welcome to uh, Watercolor 42, Studio 42, and uh, um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, landscape uh, painting. Uh, one of my favorite subjects is uh, woodlands and things like that. Um, I get into, uh, well, I, I like birch trees quite a bit. I do quite a few birch trees, and I do enjoy mountains and rivers and waterfalls and stuff like that, things, things in nature. So every so often you come across something. Uh, this happens to be from a calendar. Uh, you can see the month of March on the back. <laughs> but I wanted to uh, talk about sometimes uh, when, when you take uh, a picture, uh, say from a, a calendar photograph uh, from a, a calendar, and uh, uh, you can crop it and arrange it. Now, this this would be probably the full uh, picture of the uh, this particular mountain scene. And uh, sometimes they'll give you the name of the location, and sometimes uh, they don't include that. It would be nice if they uh, left you with the uh, location. Um, but that this could be just about anywhere, you know. <laughs> In Canada or whatever, uh, but uh, uh, what I liked about it is that they, you've got a, a, a combination of real cool colors and uh, a greater portion of the uh, picture photograph, and, and down here you got some of the warmer colors, um, uh, fields of flowers and whatnot. So it's quite a contrast. Now here's another thing that I do sometimes. Uh, if I want to convert this into uh, being more of a um, horizontal type picture rather than a, a long vertical, what I do is not uh, crop it by cutting it out, cutting out the area, but what I do is just take the paper and fold it. So uh, 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 like in this case, um, I'm going to, I, th I think there's too much blue in here so what I do is take some of the blue and I'm going to just pull this down hopefully you can notice it on TV here I'm going to bring some of this blue down into here and I'm going to take uh, some of the uh, uh, across the bottom and I'm just going to fold that back so it looks like something like this here we go so now I've cropped it quite a bit. Now, um, landscapes are relatively easy because you can break them down. You can really uh, emphasize the foreground, the middle ground area, and of course the background. Those areas are given. But also you can break it up into the, what they call the larger shapes and whatnot. And I've broken this down into five areas. There's uh, this area down in here, we'll call that number one. I usually don't put any markings on, on my pictures, but this area is one. Uh, you can put uh, two in here. This could be three, four, and five. So there's five major uh, areas, and I'm going to put those on the paper. Let's put this beside, right here, next to the uh, my area that I'm going to be working on. And so, number one, number one would be the I'm going to be the, in uh, uh, working from probably the bottom to top. In this case, uh, you can work from the top down, but a lot of times I like to build up from the foreground, middle ground, and background when I draw the pictures. So let's take this area here. Now, normally I do this in light pencil, but in order for this to show up on TV, a lot of times people can't see my pencil mark. So I'm, I'm going to use a marker, but normally I wouldn't uh, use the marker. i just do it in pencil. But okay, so number one area is this uh, part across the bottom here. And it, uh, I'm going to bring that line, start that up here from the edge. And that's going to be a, a kind of come across here. You can make it a little bit bumpier if you want. And it comes down and it goes all the way to the uh, left side to the tape. Okay, so that's area number one. Then I said number two, you can, you, you can change the numbers if you want. This area in here could have been two. Um, 
But uh, I, for some reason, I put really two, this mountain in the foreground here. So that starts way back up in here, and that kind of comes down, it comes a little bit bumpy and through here, and then it's quite steep on, on this edge. Comes down, goes into the background and somewhere into here. Okay, so that's area two. Now we get area uh, three, which is just a little slice that comes across here. And that's where some trees in here. So what I do is just make that a little bit exaggerated with trees, bump, bump it up a little bit like that, so to remind myself that this is, these are gonna be trees in here. And that can go all the way into there, okay? Now, so now we got one, two, three. Here's another area of the mountain. That's a big chunk. That's the biggest uh, shape in the photograph, anyways. And that starts way back over here to the right, comes up almost, touches the top of the paper, and then it's a little bit bumpy across here, over into here, and that's gonna go out, swings out over there to this side. So basically, we got one, two, three, four, f five. Uh, basic shapes, sky being the five, mountain is number four, and uh, number two was this, this uh, mountain in the foreground, and then the, uh, the, we got number one down here, the, the right in front. Now normally what I do is I start, if it's an outdoor picture, I start from uh, the top and work down. So what we'll do, we'll put a little bit of a wet. Let's wet this background here. Use a big brush. And I'm just going to wet the paper just with clean water. Yeah, it's across where the sky is going to go. Okay, across through here. Oh, I can use my white today also. Get that out. Make th have that handy. Okay, here we go. That's if you want to put some snow up there on the mountains. Sometimes the snow, if the mountains are higher enough, the snow stays pretty much all summer on some of those real higher peaks. Okay, something like this. Uh, it goes off there. And then um, that's about it. Now, um, let's take a little bit of blue. That's going to be lighter blue. And just going to put that across the sky in here. Okay, right, right up and through here. It's a, this, this particular photograph doesn't have any clouds in it, so I'm just gonna <laughs> leave it just solid blue for the most part. We'll have enough texture uh, when we get to the, the mountain area. Okay. Paint in through here. Now you start off usually you put uh, wet your paper uh, with a wash, wet it with water, so that when you um, apply the uh, watercolor, you can kind of smooth it out, and you don't see any brush strokes. It's all just going to dry in there, nice and smooth, nice and flat. Now, if you need a little bit more contrast, just take a pinch more of blue. Actually, that sky has a pinch of green in it. But I don't want to get too carried away with that. I'm just trying to keep it sort of more of a bluish color. But you can go a little dark with the blue. And pull that across here. You're still working wet into wet. Okay, wet into wet. We wet the paper. And because the brush has wet because of the paint and the water on the brush. Oh, wet into wet, yeah, something like that. Now, um, what I do a lot of times is I let this area dry up in there, and then we can come back and, and do some of the uh, the mountain, and then yeah, all of this to here, and then some green uh, after we do the foreground. So now we we'll shift gears a little bit here and uh, look at uh, the foreground which is this area number, I numbered it number one. All this through here is number one, and then two, three, four, so forth. Now, um, this area can be uh, predominantly uh, a lot of green in it, 
But you know what I'm going to do for the base color? I'm going to just take some uh, yellow. We'll start off with some yellow. And if you want, you can wet this a little bit down through here. You don't have to put a lot of water on, just a, just a little grazing a little bit. Do this area. This will t tend to dry out as we go along. But I'm going to start off in here. You can actually go up into there a little bit with some of that yellow. So now I'm thinking that the base color here is going to be yellow. That's the uh, base color, okay? Doesn't have to be very, uh, very dark. You can make it sort of a softer yellow. All the way through here. If you want to leave some spots in there, that's fine. Just leave, let some of the white of the paper show through. There we go. And uh, like I mentioned, we can go put a little bit of yellow into this area too, for the, where the trees and things are. Okay, I didn't bring my, uh, uh, I don't have my green with me. I, I, I'm quite sure I have one, um, my green at home, but sometimes when I rinse my, uh, my tubes off of color, I uh, forget to put something back or it gets misplaced somewhere. But we know that if you mix blue with uh, yellow, you get green. It's blue and yellow. Make green, okay. There we go, right across the bottom. You can go a little stronger with the yellow down here if you want, a little bit, bit darker. Okay, you see how you're putting in, the, these are base colors, right? Just the bottom base colors. Now, a lot of the time, if you get too carried away, you get some puddles, right? And that's going to take a little longer to dry out. So what I do is just pat, take a paper towel and just pat, make sure the towel doesn't have any other color on it. Clean paper towel, just pat that and uh, let that dry out a little bit more faster. Okay, something like that in that area. What I like about um, doing outdoor pictures, landscapes and stuff, uh, you don't have to be overly uh, controlling. In other words, the branches can bend and twist and do different things. And uh, so you don't have to be fussy. Like if you're painting uh, man-made objects, you know, you got to paint around the window casings and fuss, do all that fussy stuff, you know. But with landscape paintings, uh, you know, you can be more relaxed and natural and just kind of drop the color and don't have to be that fussy about it. Okay, I think that's all right across the bottom here. I go right down to the edge if I can, right, right to the tape. Right out to the tape. Okay, so we've got these base colors in now. Um, now, um, we can if we want. Ooh, this is sky still wet up there. Remember I mentioned that the sky is, actually has a little bit of a pinch. I mean, really a pinch. It may have a pinch of yellow in it. So, I'm going to just try it for the hang of it, see what happens. Sort of a greenish blue. Now, I don't want to tamper with it too much, but... Yeah, pull that out. Okay, now, uh, we've done, uh, this is number five, number one, and this is just the base color. So we can come back, we could still work on it, and we're letting the sky dry a bit. Uh, we can come back in here and start with some of the uh, uh, reds. Why don't we try, we'll try some of the reds. I think I got red up in here somewhere. You can mix a little bit of yellow, orange, whatever you want into, into your reds, because that's what, that, that's what it is. And I just kind of tap the brush around, put in some little patches of whatever. And uh, 
lay some of this texture in. Kind of a meadow with a field of flowers. If you want to take some blue for the fun of it, you can drop some blue into the yellow. Wiggle the brush around, get sort of a hint of green there going. Um, this is where you can have some fun with color. Dropping the little patches of paint in there. It looks like it's open through here, more like a little meadow down through here, and then we pick up uh, pick up some of that texture back over in there somewhere, over to your uh, uh, left, or my left anyway. Okay, we just drop some of that paint in there. Build, keep building it up. Now, as we go along, this is up to you, but you can you can kind of drop some blue into it, mix it in with the yellow. You notice, see, ooh, if you wiggle your brush around, activate some of that yellow with the blue, then you start getting some hints of uh, green in there. Put a little bit more yellow into that. Now this is all, it's almost, you know, when you look at the picture, it's almost like the um, the photographers, this is a little bit out of focus, you know, and I think the uh, idea was the, the artist or the photographer was trying to get into here more where the focal point might be. Let's take some of that, I'll erase some of that in in here. Like I said, the, the foreground can be a little bit um, more broken up. Okay, now if you purposely want to get green, I usually take some of my yellow, put it off in one of these wells, and just put some uh, blue, straight blue into the green, or into the yellow rather, to make green. Let's see what we got here. I don't know if it's turning green or not. It's sort of more of an off color here. There are some darker areas. Sometimes you just let the paint kind of settle in and do its thing because you can always activate watercolor, you know, if you want to erase it or change it or whatever, blot it out. You can always do that. Let's work some more color into here. Sometimes to get this particular texture, it's a little bit trickier. It takes a little bit longer to get some of that texture in. At, at first, when you look at it, you think, well, oh, those are leaves, but actually they're supposed to be plants. They're flowers going on the side of the hill here. Okay, jump around a little bit. You can spend a lot of time just being fussy uh, with a, a lot of texture. Take some of those darker spots out. Little clusters in here. It looks like, in a way, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it looks like the photographer was t setting this up out of focus here. Get some of that edge filled in. Oh, anyways, a little dabbling. Now, this may be possibly just a little bit too um, wet to uh, do any really fine defining any particular thing. But uh, we'll, let's take a little bit more yellow. So put some more of that down through here. I think I'm going to do some of those trees too while we're at it, thinking about it. I 
see the mountains going to come down into that area. Okay. Take some of that out, erase that. Now we want to get into, uh, I'm trying to get some more blue into this thing. Oh, turn it greener with the yellow. It's kind of mixing and get that green out on the, onto the paper here. Pour up in it. Lift up, go to a point with some of the uh, trees. Sort of, sort of turning green there a bit. Okay. Let's bring that back over in here more. This is a sort of blending in color. Let's go right out to the edge. Some more paint out right up to the edge of the paper here. Yeah? And bring some more of that green back up into here. And Kind of get it integrated into get some more greenish color back up into here. Okay, it's a lot of fun, but it, it's time consuming when you you know you're trying to get the uh, texture, and sometimes the colors will work pretty good. Sometimes they don't. You can't keep painting too much of wet into wet. You have to kind of let it set up for a while, and then you can come back and kind of define it so it doesn't look quite like a flat blo uh, blob of paint. Let's bring out some of the color. Let's get some more of that. Fill that in more. And go right to the edge. Right down to the tape. Right out to the tape. Okay, right along to here. Get that in the corner here. So you kind of get the idea of it somewhat. Okay. Now you can get, uh, if you want, you can go a little bit more with a brush pull some of the trees up. I'm thinking of doing that a little bit later with some of the uh, paints gray. Get really a darker color into that. More more contrast. Okay, now up into here we've got uh, a really quite a bit of a deeper blue and it does have a pinch. May have just a little pinch of uh, red into it. It's sort of a purplish color. That's not bad, actually. That's not too bad, considering I'm kind of winging it a little bit here. <laughs> but uh, that's the idea. Now, if the, if the sky is still a little bit wet, you have to be careful. So I'm not going to do exactly across the top. Now some of this uh, this mountain color can pull pull it right down in, into the, uh, the the warmer color. You can pull that down into there. Okay, so let's see wh where was I? Yeah, blue, and I'm taking a little bit of red, get, getting some red into that. Oh, not that much, <laughs> but uh, we could just take that out of there. We don't want to get too much red into that. Uh, yeah, I wanted a little purple, but not, not quite as much. Let's put a little bit more blue back into that and pull that down. 
you can make that sort of a little bit, show a little bit of texture in there. Have, have that right go right down into the, uh, the edge here, right along through here. Now the artist can take a little bit more liberty as far as color goes. I mean, you can bring out more color if, if it's too predominantly leaning towards uh, a particular color. You can kind of perk it up a little bit by doing something a little bit warmer in there. Warm it up with a red, more purple. Whatever. Get more of a contrast in there. Go right into the, uh, go right into the uh, color, the ground. Yeah, I was pull this over a little bit. See what I can do. Yeah, get this down into here more. Kind of fades out a little bit into. Kind of gets a little bit sort of misty in here. Right in there. Okay, pull it uh, a little bit down into the tree line here. And we can start working some water up into here. We're going get to get back to more uh, bluish color. Uh, up in there, let's see. Yeah, this can go up here a little further. Put that up there. Bring it right up into the sky area. Hide some of my uh, marker. Yeah. Now you can pull into this if you want to bring out some highlight. You can work that into there. Um, come across over here. I'm just wetting this down in here. Now you can leave, uh, for the white, you can almost leave the, some of the paper itself white, white into some of this area here. I'm just wetting this down for now. Okay. Up over here, it gets a little bit lighter. Now you can take a little bit of Payne's Gray if you want. And you can put some of that in here too. Now, if I go too far into the white, that's why I bring my white acrylic. I can always go over this, this, uh, and change the, uh, change it a little bit. I want to make that a little bit more blue in there. Okay. Get a little bit more blue, blue, more blue than anything else. Up in here, maybe a little darker, a little bit deeper here. You can build that up a little more. Gets pretty light off through here. Kind of fades away, fades off towards the edge of the paper. Now what happens too overnight a lot of times your colors will change a little bit. They will change um, quite a bit of blue until you get darker. I'm being kind of conservative here. Okay now um, I'll pull some of that out of there, lighten it up a bit. Okay, now um, let's think about what I want to do. Uh, let's see, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray, I don't know if that's going to help or handle or what. I'll put that up there for now. And uh, 
I'm just going to take a little bit of pinch of that, put it into my blue, see what happens. See what happens here. We'll try a little bit of, oh, too dark. <laughs> a little bit too dark. Let's take some, of, erase some of that out, out over here. I wanted to get uh, probably a little bit more of a bluish gray, not so much gray. The gray isn't bad, but, you know, it's not bad. Probably, in reality, I think the, the uh, color of the, uh, the mountain isn't really that blue, that much blue. And I think sometimes you put a filter on the camera and that we, we can get a little bit more blue back here. Maybe you can get something back here. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna get some more blue out. Ah, uh, a big tube of it somewhere. There we go. I do have a uh, ultramarine blue somewhere, but I don't know if I have it with me today. I think most of all the colors I have are phthalo blue. See what that does. And it gets a little bit more of the color back in there. I really don't want as much blue as we have in the in the in the photograph. I don't think that that's actually the color of the uh, mountain. Okay, now sometimes you have to kind of sit back and. Let certain things dry up a bit. Okay. Now, um, what I can do, I thought I had a dark, darker sepia. Where would I put that? Uh, some of this here. I don't know if I want to try that or not. Get that in with a sepia with my paint gray. Uh, what I don't like to use is sometimes I uh, use the blacks too too much straight. It's not bad, I guess. I wanted to get some darker color into here. I pull that out. Supposed to be a lot of fir trees in here. And break that up into here. I pull some of this over. Get the edge a little bit contrasting here. And it just kind of fade away out, out into the background. Ah. See what we got here. Okay. Oh, a little texturing. We're getting that contrast in there. That's what I sometimes find a little bit more difficult to uh, emphasize. 
certain areas. A little bit more dabbling around here, huh? Here we go. Let's just pull this over in here a bit more. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, this cover's not too bad to work with. I'm just going to uh, put some little patches in here of contrast in there. I think this is dry enough in here to kind of break it up a little bit more. Um, looking fairly good, isn't it, so far? <laughs> Miracles do happen here. <laughs> Sometimes if, if you try not to get too fussy, you're better off. <laughs> Looks like halfway decent here. <laughs> What's happening? All right. Yeah, take a little bit more. Contrasting. See, you do have to let certain areas dry, otherwise they it just kind of bleeds in, and and you you want to bring out a little bit more contrast with the texture of the flowers, the plants, or whatever. So you do have to let it set up a little bit, and then come in with some of the darker shades. And most of the shading is actually. Uh, what it is, it's sh uh, the under shade of the, some of the plants, yeah. And go a little bit darker on the edge, break that up a bit. And then as you go away, it kind of fades away, you know, you kind of take the brush and wiggle it out, soften it out. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, we can come back in there, let that dry a little bit more. I just want to push some a little bit more color, a contrast up into there, a little bit more. And I don't know if that's going to hold its shape or not. Not bad. Need to be a little bit darker here. Push, push some of that out of there. Okay. Now, normally, like I said. Uh, uh, I wouldn't use my marker a lot of times uh, because sometimes it's hide, hard uh, to hide some of your marker. So, you know, you see, still see some uh, marker showing through. So what you have to do is try to disguise it, hide it, if you don't want that marker to show up much. So you just kind of put some darker color in there to f hide it a little bit. And probably, you know, when, when I go to a smaller brush, I can do a little bit more, get a little bit more fussier with it. But uh, I've always enjoyed uh, mountains, the mountains. We used to go up into New Hampshire a lot, you know. And you go along the highway, you, you almost feel as if you could pull the car over and just walk up. It, it seemed like the mountain was relatively a short distance, you know, but uh, it's very deceiving uh, uh, when, when you're looking at the uh, mountains, how far away and how how difficult. My parents used to say, well, you're not going to climb up there. That will take a while. <laughs> it looks easy, but it's not. They were absolutely right. I've climbed a few mountains up in New Hampshire. Uh, the, 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 of course, the, uh, the one I remember the most is Mount Washington. We went up there, five or six of us went up one time. We came down the same day. We didn't stay overnight or anything like that. And uh, if you ever 
climbed any mountains at, at all and haven't done too much of it, you'll find that holding yourself back coming down is a little bit even harder than climbing sometimes. And you're using muscles in your legs that you normally wouldn't use. And that's what you really notice, kind of, kind of trying to hold in yourself, you know, from go, going too far forward too fast, coming down. I know for about a day or so, my legs ached for a while. And once you get over it, you feel like a million bucks. Once you get back on your normal. There you go. Well, it, it, it needs a little bit more work. It's, it's, it's kind of wet in here, so it's going to get smudgy. It's going to get blurry, which is okay, I guess, to some extent, but you don't, you know, you don't want to get too much of it. Now, sometimes what I do is I have a little pick too, and I can uh, pick out and, and bring out some of the white of the paper. I don't have that little pick with me today. I, I've got several paint boxes, and uh, someday I'll get everything organized to a point where I have a little bit of everything in the box. Sometimes I bring a pair of scissors and I don't use them, and, and other times I need the scissors, but I don't have them, type of thing. Okay, this needs a little bit more contrast in here. Now, I can either make the uh, mountains in the background more noticeable, or I can um, make this a little darker, okay? So what I, what I might do is come across here and just pull that down a little bit more contrast in there. Give that a little bit more texture, pull that in here. Yeah, bring that out more up in here too. Make that a little darker there. This, is, this looks halfway decent through here. Uh, probably needs a little bit more stippling and texture uh, here and there. And like I was saying, sometimes if I want to bring some of the white of the paper back, I just pick at it with one of my little uh, hooks I have there. Just to bring out some of the paper underneath white of the paper. Okay. I need a little bit more contrast over here. Let's paint that in some more. I have a false mat I put use as a tape for that. And sometimes you have to make bring it bring the color r right to the edge of the tape otherwise when you take the tape off it looks kind of and it doesn't look so clean cut anymore. Okay. Now I could give it a, just a little bit across the top here. Put a little bit more color back up into the sky. That's still wet. <laughs> Around in here. What I what I do, um, this is still wet in here a little bit. So, what what, what I do sometimes is I just let that set up, and later on I come back and add some more texture into it, which uh, just stippling, just you know. Uh, tapping it with the brush. And like I said, you can pick at it a little bit if you want some more white to show through. Now, if I want to add more uh, color into the uh, mountains back there, um, what I usually do is let that uh, mountain dry out pretty well and then see where you lose some of the contrast in here. 
Uh, you can either make that darker here. I don't want to do that while I'm talking about. You can go a little d deeper in there, there and uh, or you can make this uh, hill or mountain in the foreground a little bit darker too, a, a contrast against that. So this should be more noticeable in here. Just kind of pull that out. Follow the, kind of the, uh, the down pull of the uh, rocks, you know. Add a little bit more highlight into that. Sometimes you can take a, um, um, a Q-tip. Uh, I don't know if I got one in a, while, while it's still wet. Uh, you can take a piece of plastic or Q-tip or something. But what you can do while it's wet, still wet, you can kind of scratch into it and add some more texture that way. Okay, there's a lot of little tricks to the trade that you can work on. So, oh, that's another thing too. Um, when I do do pencil uh, drawings, a lot of times your pencils get a little bit on the dull side. So you can use an electric uh, pencil sharpener, but what I do is I use those little small manual ones because a lot of times when you put uh, your uh, pencils into uh, the electric uh, uh, pencil sharpeners, it makes the point too thin and, too, and it breaks easy. So I use the manual one a little bit more. So you have to keep checking on that once in a while. So that's basically the idea. Um, uh, and uh, I'm just going to now uh, kind of, if I can get the tape off, show you what it lo looks like if it had a white mat around it. When you pull the tape off, you want to pull it on, on an angle like this, 45 degree angle. Don't just tear it off uh, quick because you might damage the, the surface of your watercolor paper. Um, this does help clean it up a bit. Whoa. <laughs> I try to fix this on, <laughs> on the back so that it's easy to, to remove the tape, but sometimes Sometimes it gets a little bit sticky here, so so I'm going to take uh, another corner here, see if I have better luck. I don't know. I'm going to try this one. Go this way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's better. You have to have clean fingers here. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> so anyways, I took a uh, photograph that was more or less vertical, and by folding the paper, I kind of cropped it in. So what we ended up with more of a horizontal painting here. And uh, the colors, I think, I think the colors in the uh, photograph are, are a little bit too, I don't see, think I've ever seen rocks and mountains that particular color, but I think it has a lot to do with the filter they may use on the camera. But uh, that gives you an idea of what it looks like. And normally, normally you wouldn't see that strong an outline, but I did, I used the marker for the outline, so it's kind of it's a little bit on the heavy side. You can take you can take some of the uh, lines out. Was probably use white acrylic paint too, but uh, I didn't go that far with it today. We got a few little blurs. That's what happens sometimes when you paint uh, your your uh, watercolors um, kind of blur a little bit if you paint too much wet into wet. Uh, in here, it needs a little bit more work with the texture, but. Uh, that's basically the idea of that. Basically, yeah. Yep. 
So I don't know. You you can get an idea of, uh, but uh, I don't always try to uh, copy uh, photographs exactly. I kind of deviate a little bit here and there, and uh, because what happens is that if you were there and were moving around, you would see that mountain differently, you know, from different location. So sometimes if I distort a little bit here and there, well, maybe, maybe that from that particular position, uh, it would look okay. So. You can't always make it exactly, you know. You can't really lock it in that much. But that's basically the idea. You got those three large areas. You got your one, two, three, four, five. Five big uh, large areas that you're working, working into, okay? So I'm running a, uh, out of time a little bit today. Um, but uh, uh, I think I got few more minutes on the clock here but uh, I, oh I want to show you something else it's another picture it's another photograph but uh, here this is a, a picture I, I don't know exactly where this would be located it could be somewhere in Yosemite National Park but anyways again this is from another a calendar photograph and so I, I took out this particular part of the uh, the uh, picture. Now, what's happening here? And, and uh, you've got the trees almost dead center, and and almost a waterfall dead center. So, if I was going to do a painting, I would try to make it look a little diff different. So, I'm going to show you what happens. He is folding the the picture. If if you put, fold it just vertically through the center. Okay, what happens is this half area looks almost like the opposite side. You see the idea of that? See, you got the waterfall coming down straight and then you got the trees lined up. So the trees are actually pointing. They're like, like arrows say, look at the waterfall, but you don't, you don't need that much emphasis to put the trees smack in the middle. And the waterfall is somewhat centered. See how this area, these shapes are basically on this side similar. See, this to this, this to that. So what I do, I take uh, the photograph and uh, f fold it up a little bit. Let's take the trees out, okay? So fold, fold the bottom back. You don't see the trees now. So uh, now, this side still, this area looks similar to this side. So what we do is take some of that away. Does that make it look more interesting this way? Okay. Now, as you keep folding in, your focal point really, I think, it should be the waterfall. So what I'm doing here is emphasizing and closing in. Now, you could fold this back a little bit more. But I want one side to be a little bit larger than the other. I don't want the waterfall to be dead center again. See how it's almost centered again? So what I do is leave that in and maybe take a little bit away from the other side. So if I was going to do the painting, now those trees that I folded back underneath here, if you want to bring them back into the painting, you can, but locate them somewhere to the left of center or to the right of center. I would say more to the uh, 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 left of center so to kind of balance the trees over here on this side. But you don't need them down there. See how that works? So I would crop this and bring it in pretty much paint it this way. Now, if you don't want the cloud its formations to be too similar, see they're basically the same shape, just make one large and then another one medium and small. You got three in there, but just, just they look too similar. So I break them up as far as size goes. So th there's a lot of things that you can do, you know, crop your picture. So I'm running out of time today. So I always say to folks, grab a brush here. <laughs> okay, I'm all done folks for the day. So brushes up and we'll see you next time.